How many of you have heard of the Internet of Things, even if you're not an engineer? So that's what I want to talk about tonight. The IoT and my personal experience. Justin, start it. And again? So it is, in fact, the Internet of Things. And the first slide, we can move beyond since it's been introduced. So the Internet of People is us connecting through other people, Facebook, uh, LinkedIn, whatever your, your, your uh, favorite, famous one is that you like to use. The Internet of Things is connecting things to things. I'll talk about what, what those things are. But 50 billion of these in 2020, 3 billion people working on the Internet in 2014. So you can imagine this to be your living room. It looks like mine to a certain, a certain extent. And these individual aspects here, motion sensor, door control, uh, HVAC, there are things that are sensors or, or some output and they're connected to the internet through a way of connecting to another thing that somehow makes them more valuable. I'll give some examples of that, like your electric meter. This is a pg and one, it's on my house. And this could be connected directly to the internet. It turns out they drive by and they connect it to a wireless signal and they figure out what the, my recent reading was. But this could be giving me moment by moment energy use in my home and that would be a thing in the internet, the way it's being, being described. Now you probably know that Google bought Nest for 3.2 billion recently. Of course, you can get the Nest uh, thermometer, not thermometer, but thermostat on your phone. There's the actual version of it on the right. It can be in your home. It's intimately connected with the internet. In fact, the next slide will prove that in a very interesting way as a cartoon. I don't have one. I have something similar that I bought about four years ago. I think the Nest smoke detector is going off. Google, Google AdWords just pitched me a fire extinguisher and offer for temporary housing. It's all connected together. So the Internet of People, the Internet of Things are connected together. And whether we like it or not, this is the world we're going to be living in. I already see ads up all the time for things I was searching for. Now it shows up as part of my email. And uh, my house is going to be involved in it. Little Johnny wants to brush his teeth. Little Johnny's not brushing his teeth. Mom says, Johnny, you're not brushing your teeth. I've got a record here of how many times you brushed it. This is a product from Beam. They sell this wirelessly and it reports to mom and dad or whoever what your brushing habits are. If you can't measure it, you can't what? Improve it. You can also have a light bulb that's got an IP address on it. And if you wish to set the mood just right, you can do that. You can see the mood lighting over there on the, uh, on the iPhone, which is just a particular app. So that's a thing that's considered to be part of the Internet of Things. So here's my project why I did an IoT project for me, how I built it, and what are the results. You can move on from that. Uh, With auto, I oh, it's on auto, auto. that's fine. Too. Anyway, <laughs> so I forgot about this one, it be longer. But this is the basic. So I had a, a toilet leak where the plunger didn't go down. For three days I wasn't home, and it um, racked up a bill of $1,145. This happened to me twice. The second time it happened to me, I said, this is never going to happen a third time. I'm going to do something about it. <clears throat> so I decided to, just about four years ago, put a system in where I could monitor over here on the right. I, I, I got a plumber to put in a, um, a water meter that has a one click per gallon output on it. You see it's in my house, not, it's not owned by the city. And I also put a motion sensor in. I, I have many of those in series. And I decided to monitor the irrigation system to know when it was on. So those are signals coming out, you might say, for uh, irrigation knowledge, motion knowledge, and one click per gallon knowledge. It cost me $200 to put that uh, water um, sensor in, plus $100 just to buy it. That's the, that's the bleeding edge, by the way. You can buy these other things. Those are easy to get to. That is, uh, there's nobody making anything like that today that I could find. That's why I built my own. The motion sensor, the water sensor, and the irrigation sensor go into a uh, signal conditioner. That's because, for example, the water sensor is, uh, and the irrigation sensor is 24 volts AC. That's hard to, to uh, take that and move it into the internet. So this thing conditions it for this box over here called MOXA. I'll talk about that in a minute. It basically receives all of the inputs from the sensors, and then it has some logic in it, 24 lines of code, very simple. It says, if there was a water flow and it debounces the contact, then I'm going to call the service on the web. And that's where the alarms and graphs are. The next graph, we'll show about that in the next picture. So here's the three sensors that I have. I don't show the signal conditioning. This box here in the middle then basically decides when does it call the services at the bottom. I built an alarm and disarm uh, keypad in the kitchen to turn the thing on and off. 
I built 500 lines of code in the internet there that receives the messages saying there's water flow, there's irrigation, there's motion, and it sends a message to my phone if there's a leak or if there's motion or if there's irrigation when there shouldn't be. I also have some plotting over here on the far right. Those are sensor graphs that show up and give me basically um, over time I can see what's happened to water. So here's an example of it. Water flow in gallons per minute. This is Zively. It's free for me because I'm just a consumer. A cumulative uh, per month. So this is one month right here. You see it building up during the month and it resets on, on the first of the month. Then it builds up and resets on the first of the month. This is a thousand gallons here. This is over three different months. So I can get that on my phone. I can get it at home. At the bottom is motion. So I really know what my house is doing at all times. And I couldn't buy this. I couldn't buy it because nobody made anything that dealt with water flow management. They had water leaks, which I can you know, find. You put a sensor under your sink, it's leaking. I want to know about the whole house, a holistic view of what water is doing in the house. And it's proved to be valuable. Now, you can imagine a cyber terrorist taking advantage of your toothbrush. It could happen, right? It's all connected to the internet, to this internet of things, or your car, or your house. Uh, as a, certainly your toothbrush is part of it, I suspect. But there's some concern about this. We're all a little bit concerned about it, especially when you have 50 billion of these things floating around. It says, bad news, dear. The scale is threatening to cut off our access to, to, to the fridge. That's the Internet of Things. Could it get that way? Maybe so. If you programmed it to be that way, like I program my water monitor to send me messages only at certain times, this might be the, the case of the future where you get on a scale and it tells you you're eating too much, the refrigerator is going to shut you off. That's my experience in the Internet of Things. Thank you.